Welcome to worship today. I'm Michael Mann, I'm pastor at St. Andrew United Methodist Church. You can call me he, him. I am so glad that you are here today because today we gather from wherever we are to worship God in unity of purpose and spirit. As we do that, I want to remind you of some of the ways that we serve our community. One of the things that we've done in the past is to hand out a bag. Sometimes people keep this in their car. And if you see somebody that you think might be hungry or maybe they're asking for some money or something, you can give them one of these bags that have water and food in them uh, just to let them know that they are cared for, to let them know that they are loved. We have these available at church now and you're able to pick them up if you're able to come by church. We are open 10 to 2, Tuesday through Thursday. And of course, you can always text me and let me know and I can open, open up the church for you and get you some of these too. Today, let us gather as God's people in unity, in unity of purpose and in love of Jesus Christ. May we gather as we hear now a call to that unity in worship. Join now in our call to worship. Good morning. I am Erica McIntosh, and I welcome you to the community of St. Andrew United Methodist Church. Now, I invite you to rise in body or spirit and join me in the call to worship. Let us gather in the presence of God, today the one through whom all families on earth receive their life and name. We come in prayer that the peace of Christ may dwell in our family relationships and homes. We come in prayer that the peace of God might permeate the life of the whole human family. May the love of Christ fill our hearts, our lives, and our world to the glory of God. Amen. Please pray with me. God, who is spirit, you are here in the world among us. Draw us ever closer to you that we may become one as you are one. Draw us ever closer to the word made flesh of Jesus, that we may be wise. Draw us ever closer to the world, that we may love as you guide us to love. In that holy name by which we are called, claimed as your own, and sent out, we pray. Amen. Our scripture reading is about Jesus praying for his disciples. 
he speaks to God saying that he and God are one and that all he has is also God's. He prays that his disciples will be one as God and Jesus are one in spirit. I've been thinking about this idea of all being one and while I was in the garden the other day, fresh air, birds singing, flowers all over the place, I looked down to see this pulmonaria plant. Can you see it? It's different from most flowering plants in that it has two different colored flowers on each stem, pink and blue. It reminded me that we are all different from each other, but all loved by God. We are from the same vine, God's vine. Jesus taught his disciples the good news God taught him, and he said to them, go and teach others. What was this teaching, you might ask? It was God sending Jesus to proclaim God's love for all people and all creation. Right then, right then. God gave Jesus a mission, and Jesus gave that mission to his disciples, whose mission was to pass that on to all people, who would in turn pass it on to others on and on and on until we come to today where you and I are now given that mission as children of God. Just as this plant's flowers are different colors on one stem, we are different. We look, sound, walk, and play differently, but we are all in God's love. The way we pass that love on to others will be different, but the message will be the same. We are loved and nourished by the one God who wants to walk with each of us to build his kingdom together with us. Let us pray. Giver God, we know you love us because Jesus showed us that this is so. Help each of us to live out that love to others every day. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thank you. As we turn now to the Holy Gospel, I invite you to rise in body or spirit as we hear these words. The scripture for today is from John chapter 17, verses 6 through 23. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me, I have given to them, and they have received them and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, 
and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them in your name that you have given me. I guarded them, and not one of them was lost except the one destined to be lost, so that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you, and I speak these things in the world, so that they may have my joy made complete in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them because they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. I am not asking you to take them out of the world, but I ask you to protect them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself so that they also may be sanctified in truth. I ask not only on behalf of these, but also on behalf of those who will believe in me through their word, that they may all be one, as you, Father, are in me, and I am in you. May they also be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. The glory that you have given me, I have given them, so that they may be one, as we are one. I in them, and you in me, that they may become completely one, so that the world may never know that you have sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. May God add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and understanding of Holy Scripture, and we respond by saying, thanks be to God. Please be seated. Oh man, hearing that song, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet. Ah, oh, it takes me right back. Back to a church camp about 30 years ago. Now, if you've never been to church camp, picture Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts, except with worship services at night. I mean, it was amazing. Now, I was in the hot, hot south at that time. And yet these nighttime services were amazing. It was a, a time when we would get together and the world would be shut out. That's right. We were just us together and the world wasn't there. You know what I mean by the world? That place where you have to prove yourself for whatever's next so you can keep on proving yourself for whatever's next. You've got to get those good grades so that you can get into college and Keep having those good grades and keep studying and keep proving yourself and work and keep moving up and buying that house and having those two point whatever children and keep proving yourself throughout time. You know what I mean? The world. But for that little bit, there was no world there. We were all gathered together, boys and girls, and we didn't even have the hormones to worry about. None of that. We were just there to worship God. And they sing together, time after time, in the round, singing Thy Word and some other great songs. It just felt like these camp songs that became a part of us, became a part of who we were. So we weren't 200 people anymore, but singing together, walking together, living together in harmony. For four out of those five nights, anyway, I think we had that. Yeah, yeah, four out of the five. Because like the fifth night, I don't know, some silly person had made this determination that this um, cafeteria that was usually the place where we got this great food, we had this fried something and vegetable and all the chocolate milk you could drink. On this one night, the fifth night, it was supposed to be the date night. Almost none of us had any dates, but when we walked in, we were reminded that we were losers if we didn't have a date. I mean, it was like we had done so much to push the world out, and then on that fifth night, the world showed up. 
you know, the world. It's one where there are winners and there are losers. And if somebody else is winning, then you must be losing. You know that world? The one where we set up this whole system to judge who's worthy, who has more degrees, who has less debt, who eats better. We even pull in scripture to define and defend it even when it's indefensible when it comes to racism and slavery. The world that makes you defend yourself every time because of your age, gender, orientation, or race. All of those things we have built up, constructed on God's world. And we call them the same as God's world. But today, Jesus reminds us that those structures, those divisions, do not exist naturally. They're not the way that God made the world that God so loves. So maybe the most loving thing we can do is to knock those structures down. To knock it down as we remember our connection to the world. To knock it down with some prayer. That prayer. Now, prayer is usually a way that we talk and connect with God. It's expressing our feelings, desires, hopes, longings, and acknowledging a bit of who God is. John 17 is a prayer, but it's a different kind of prayer. See, John chapters 13 through 17 as a whole, they're all one long night. One long night in the Gospel of John. And we read this part in John 17 because today is Ascension Sunday. On Sunday we celebrate Jesus' last words with his disciples and his community with us as he goes out of the world and into what God would have. The world being that structure that we have made on God's world. So Jesus prays. And he prays, they are yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. The followers of Jesus kept the word, the order of God's world that is united with Jesus, the word made flesh, and that is described in this word we use called love. Jesus prays, all mine are yours and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them, and now I am no longer in the world. Now Jesus is reminding us who we are, to whom we belong, and letting us know that he will be physically gone from that built-up structure called the world, but we will remain, and he too will be a part of this whole creation of God that is still there. So Jesus prays, sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. But you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. Jesus' prayer reminds us that whatever may come, whatever changes may happen, this truth will guide us. Whatever changes come, we will be enough to meet it. We will be enough to remember who we are, where we are from, whose we are, and where we are headed. Prayer. Prayer. A prayer that we may be one. Now, this prayer was a teaching tool. The community around John weren't present when these words were spoken. John himself may not have even been there to hear them, but these words are cobbled together from remembrances about Jesus, here to remind us what Jesus is about. This fully human, the most human human who ever humaned, and to remind us that he is connected to a greater one. So maybe this prayer isn't so much Jesus talking to himself, but it's one for us to hear that we may be one. You know, I hear so many things about being one. Many of them are wrong. Being one is not sameness. I loved our children's time that pointed that out today. One does not mean that if we disagree, we should walk away saying, well, one day you, you're going to see it the way that I do. 
as if the arc of history kind of bends towards me <laughs> instead of towards God's justice and what God wants. To be one does not mean that we give up who we are, our history, our language, or reactions, or, or how we have lived in the world, but it allows us to embrace a diversity that allows us to meet the biggest challenges that we have ahead. Being one does mean embracing who we are and who we are becoming. Finding resources in each other that we didn't know that we had. Embracing the joy along the way. It's not if you keep the word that I tell you, then you'll be a part of us, but a unity that we experience with all creation. That's right. You see that the world is mostly the structure that we've been living in, but there is a much bigger part of it that is beyond that. A world that God loves, that encompasses all of creation, and we are a part of that. A unity that we experience as we are made holy. As we are pulled out of that structure of the world and pulled into the world that God loves. You know, if we were in United Methodist circles, if we were in confirmation class, I might go into how this is what we call sanctification. It's a big word, but in the United Methodist circles, it means this process where we are becoming who God wants us to be. It's a journey over our lifetimes where our desires and our Goals and our will begin to align with what God has as we are uniting with all of God's creation. The desire that God has for this whole world that goes beyond what I want for myself and the, all the stuff I've got to measure up to that goes beyond the world that we have built up. Instead, we are invited to a new journey. Do we dare take it? You know, Ascension Sunday is about the end of one time and the beginning of another. Next week, we'll have a celebration of Pentecost as the Spirit comes down. And this is the time of Jesus moving out and going away and calling us to embrace who we are. You know, I hear a lot of language right now that is appropriate for this Ascension Sunday, but it's kind of making me scratch my head. I, I heard this week a lot of people say, you know, the pandemic is ending. So, kind of, it's Ascension Sunday, we're ending one time. I mean, I was at a golf outing on Friday where a lot of people used that phrase. I was there working the golf outing, I do not golf. But I heard people say, oh, it's a perfect day for the end of a pandemic. And I scratch my head and I think, I want to get there too. But we're not quite done yet. We are still on the process of that you know, right now, if the current rate of deaths continue, COVID-19 will be about the third leading cause of death in the United States after uh, heart disease and cancer. And it's 100% preventable if we mask and we get a vaccine. So if you haven't already, I encourage you to get a vaccine and keep on masking where you aren't sure other people have had a vaccine yet. Wear a mask, get a vaccine. We're not there yet. Loving the world that God loves, I think, is probably means we can mask for a little while longer. And yet we're talking about what it might mean when that ends. And so I hear people say, well, we wanted the goal to bring people back to church or to get back where we were. We want our, our giving or our numbers to be where they were two years ago. That's not a real vision, is it? I heard somebody say this week, bringing people back is not a vision. Moving people forward is a vision. Asking where we go from here, knowing that we are different and we will be different in the future. We aren't focused on getting back as much as we're focused on moving forward, carrying with us who we are that is our unity together. Because you know what? The church may look different. The structures that we have built, even those that we have named in our 
denominations like United Methodist, they may be very different in 10, 20, 30 years. Some of them may not even be around as we have known. I believe that the next two to three decades are going to be marked by changes in the Christian church that we haven't seen for 500 years. You know what? I am excited to be a part of it. Because we are on a journey together. We are focusing not on what divides us, but what can draw us together. On the march towards God's vision of a humanity joined together as one. And willing to pull down any structures that deny that humanity in someone else. They do not let us see our unity with all of God's creation. Ascension is about the end of one time and the beginning of another. Ascension is about reminding us that we are one. Now, some of you may have experienced that ascension time already. I think I read more than one account this week of pastors who used the example of a child moving off to college. Now, I haven't experienced that. But one of those little reminders that I do remember is the first time of sending my child off to summer camp. And the time that I remember dropping them off and asking over and over, do you have all this? Do you have that? Do you have this? Do you have that? And being told repeatedly, yes, Dad, I do. And, you know, the parting words I left were, um, remember, uh, wear a hat. Uh, wear a sunscreen and, and put on sunglasses. And I'm saying, I've got it. And there I just had to stand silently as my little one walked off into some sense of adulthood, entering that time where they were joining with the rest of the world into this new creation time. I wonder if we are having to let go of some of the things that we've set up over this last year or even before as we embrace this new time, knowing that everything we've taught, everything we've done, everything that we have believed in will be a great way to imagine this future together, a future where we are one. Amen. Indeed. I'm Dave Farley and a member of St. Andrew's local and global outreach. Each year, this committee discusses and selects various organizations outside of our own church to support financially by introducing them to you and providing the opportunity to make special offering above and beyond our regular church giving. Today, we bring you a local organization based in Chicago called MYSI an acronym for Methodist Youth Services, Inc. It was founded in 1965 by a group of Methodist men with a goal of eradicating homelessness by providing shelter care, temporary housing, and community-based management support for homeless children, adults, and families. These services are as vital today as they were 56 years ago. MYSI continually embraces their mission of helping people in need 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Various programs and community-based services they provide include transitional living housing, independent living options, juvenile justice, senior success, bridges, supportive group home, and clinical psychology and psychiatry. 
You can learn much more about each of these by logging on to myschicago.org. myschicago.org. And as a side note, as I was searching the website for information, I discovered that the vice chairman of the board is none other than former St. Andrew pastor, Dr. Norval Brown. So there you have it. Thank you. Loving God of both comfort and challenge, we have been blessed to know the feeling of being surrounded in your loving arms like a child. Yet we also know that is not a place we can stay. You send us to be part of the world, but not of the world. You call us to give so that love, compassion, and hope might be set loose. We give instead out of gratitude for your loving heart made known to us in Christ. Use us in this way. We pray in the blessed name of Christ, who by your love overcame death. Amen. Please be seated. I want to invite you to pray with me. This will be an extended time of prayer. I'm going to pray for you in a pastoral prayer. I invite you to pray along and lift up your own requests. And then we'll pray a prayer of confession together. Let us pray. With eyes looking heavenward towards the beauty of the skies, we are so tempted to trace the ascension of our Savior back to you, O God, that you remind us that there is beauty all around us that here is where we are to take that spirit indwelling and get moving, that restless spirit that moves in, around, and through us, calling us to service, offering peace and justice to all of us. Your spirit brings us comfort. So now, as we need your comfort, we name those areas in our lives that have weighed on us this week. We start with areas of the world that we're thinking about. I especially want to lift up today Palestine and Israel. We pray for India and Cambodia and Brazil and the U.S. as we continue to deal with COVID for hope and connection when we are in a pandemic of loss. Your ascension reminds us that loss will not have the last word. So we pray together, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our families and friends, for those enduring chronic illness, for those with mental health needs. That covers just about all of us. For those with whom we celebrate, either because of graduation or experiencing another year of life. For those who mourn, we mourn with them, and we especially name the friends and family of Terry Pearson, Barb Meisner, and Robert Peterson. For each of these, we pray together, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Help us to be those who allow your spirit to move us into healing and mercy, to be bearers of peace and hope. We offer to you our lives in the blessed hope of the ascended Christ as now we gather at this time to pray, as he taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I invite you to continue praying with me as we pray together a prayer of confession. This is not meant to make us feel shame, but to admit where we are, so that we may enter into what God has for all of us. Let us pray. O oh God, you desire for us to be one in you, a desire so strong that you prayed for it on the night before you gave yourself up for us. May we strive to enter that unity celebrating our own uniqueness as we embrace others. Forgive us when we live too much in the world ruled by greed and not by love. 
Forgive us when we push away the great joy that you have for us. Give us a vision of what is possible, of all that could be. And restore our courage that we may step into the future unafraid. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, I'm going to invite you to hear these words of assurance. God's mercy doesn't hold shame over us. But if we confess our sins, the scripture says God is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from everything we've done wrong. It is a grace extended to us before we know it. The grace that allows us to say to each other, in the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. I am forgiven. We are forgiven. Amen. And now as those who are being forgiven and reconciled, I invite you now to type the word peace, either in the comments on Facebook or on YouTube, however you're accessing this worship today, would you type the word peace there? May the peace of Christ be with you now and always. Amen. As you go forth today, hear these words. With the power of God's Holy Spirit, go now into the world that God loves and claims. Let that power claim you, a power to love and live in the fullness of joy. As we go our separate ways, we go in unity of purpose to bless our communities. As we go in the name of God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God and Mother of us all. Amen.